Democrats Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell booted from the House Intel Committee, and they say Kevin McCarthy's move is an act of political vengeance. Here's why. I think this is an effort by McCarthy to please the boss down in Mar-a-Lago to uh, excite the right-wing base. They've spoken in favor of the Russian side on an intelligence committee where I don't know if these are people who are trustworthy with national security information. As you said, they could give that information to Donald Trump and God knows what else. And so, yes, we are, we are concerned that, uh, you know, there is uh, a sympathy for or a desire to, you know, do Putin's bidding uh, instead of America's. Oh boy, Joe Concha, Fox News contributor, joins us now. Joe, it seems like Putin and Trump are just always going to be their scapegoat no matter what. What do you think? Actually, it's like a reflex, like a tick, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> this is what we continue to see. Here's the bottom line. Adam Schiff, Eric Swalwell have no business being on intel committees based on their actions, based on their words. Schiff has leaked to the price, uh, the press, excuse me, time and time and time again. He, he simply cannot be trusted. And, and for years, he insisted that he had evidence of, of collusion between Donald Trump and the Kremlin, and he has never produced it when asked about it. And there was this thing called the Mueller report as well that basically exonerated the former president. Trump on that measure. Yet media outlets continue to book Schiff on a regular basis for interviews and treat his word as, as, as gospel instead of gossip. And as for Eric Swalwell, if you played a game where you said, hey, what are the first two words that come to mind when you hear the name Eric Swalwell? Fang Fang would be the number one answer. She, of course, was a Chinese spy that he had a relationship with. So to quote Barack Obama, elections have consequences. And this removal of these two men uh, is is that consequence, Todd? Mm. I, I was trying to think of an analogy to what Swalwell just said, blaming Putin again after years after it was debunked, and I'm pretty sure this is basically like saying the Earth is flat, uh, something that nobody would say is true at this point, but he still is beating this horse, and the people on MSNBC are eating it up like it's the gospel. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what gets him back on MSNBC or CNN. He keeps making these allegations. Uh, it stirs up the audience. And, and yet, again, th there is no connection there. I, and, and it does have consequences, by the way. Just speaking of consequences, Todd and Ashley, because when you look at a Gallup poll from the 2016 election, two-thirds of Democratic voters believe that Russia changed vote totals to help Donald Trump win. So when you keep repeating this stuff over and over again, uh, despite evidence to the contrary, enough folks that watch those stations believe that there really is Russian influence on our elections to the point where vote totals are being literally changed. And, and that's a big problem. That's election uh, denial right there in its own right. Joe, switching gears to this, Republicans are now demanding information from Hunter Biden's art dealer. Listen to this. Hmm. We know that money was coming from uh, adversaries in Russia, Ukraine, and China into various accounts that were funding money for Hunter for in the uh, consulting capacity. Uh, he, he, we don't know what he was consulting. Uh, we believe that they were not paying him this money just out of the kindness of their heart. We believe they were getting something in return. Joe, what's your reaction to this? Boy, actually, it sounds a lot like Burisma, right? The Ukrainian energy company where uh, Hunter Biden made boatloads of money despite not having any experience in working in, you know, energy. And, and, and look, the, the fact that the president's son, uh, who has less experience than, than my first grader does uh, with art when he does finger painting, uh, and, and you have Hunter Biden earning, what, hundreds of thousands of dollars for his art, and we don't know who the buyers are? Uh, yeah, this warrants some attention. And, and look, Richard Painter, right, who is the chief ethics lawyer for George W. Bush from 2005 to 2007, uh, he said that, you know, a foreign government could could front someone to make this purchase, or lobbyists could try to buy the art to win goodwill from the White House. You need to know who's buying this stuff, because clearly, when Hunter Biden's making, what, $225,000 for his art, and we don't know who the buyers are, yeah, he could be compromised, as he could be compromised in China, Ukraine, and therefore, the president himself could be compromised as well. This warrants attention, Todd. Finally, Joe Rogan calling out the media for gaslighting viewers about violent riots. Listen to this. You're not the f***ing propaganda department. You can't define things in a way to, to calm people down. That's not what you're f***ing 
job is. But that's but right. you're you're b people. You're acting as a propagandist. Like that's not re it's not mostly peaceful when a car's on fire. Saying the truth, Joe. Yeah, and, and we saw that in Atlanta just recently, right, where you had a guest on CNN, for example, and he's presented as an independent journalist, right? And, and it turns out uh, that he's actually an activist uh, who works on behalf of, of Antifa, or at least it appears if you look at his uh, Facebook page. And he, and he said that, no, it's not a violent protest if you set police cars on fire, if you destroy buildings, uh, if, if you do all these acts that could lead to people getting hurt. Uh, Joe Rogan, as usual, is exactly right uh, in, in this case. It is gaslighting and it is dangerous because it seems to, at least from some outlets, appear to say this is okay and it's not okay. And we've been seeing it now, uh, at least since the summer of 2020. Uh, fiery but mostly peaceful <laughs> protests uh, just isn't a very good headline, guys. No, it's not. But, Joe, it's always good to see you, my friend. We're going to have to let you go with that. Have a good day. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.